Hello, and today in this lab we're going to be looking at some different properties of water. Uh, we'll run through a total of about 10 different stations to look at these properties. Our first station, uh, we'll be looking at uh, capillary action. We'll be doing that using a uh, paper towel. I've already cut the paper towel into the dimensions uh, it's asking us for 2 centimeters by 15 centimeters long. Uh, we'll take that uh, paper towel and we'll attach it to a pencil so it hangs down into my beaker and inside the beaker I'm going to place about 10 milliliters of water. So I got 10 milliliters of water already measured out. I'll put that in our beaker for you and then we'll set up our paper towel so that it hangs suspended into that water and then we'll let it sit there for about five minutes. So it's going to be about five minutes of it sitting there. So I got it set in place. I'll put my tape down to tape it in place and we'll just let it sit there for five minutes. Uh, so to kind of give you a close up on what's going on here, you can see just the very tip of it is wet right now. And we'll come back in about five minutes and see what's at. Uh, so as we check back in at, with our paper towel after about five minutes, uh, if we look on the bottom, we can see the water's uh, been seeped up the paper towel about halfway up uh, the paper towel. Uh, this is capillary action causing it to move up that paper towel against the force of gravity uh, but we can definitely see that movement up the paper towel uh, so that's some capillary action taking place it's moved up about half uh, for our next activity activity two uh, we're looking at uh, two graduated cylinders they both have the exact same amount of water five milliliters in them uh, one is made out of plastic the other one's made out of glass. And we're just trying to look at the meniscus on there. The meniscus, that's where the top of the water level is. And usually it makes a little bend at the top uh, in a graduated cylinder. Uh, and a lot of times you can see a more pronounced bend in our glass graduated cylinder compared to the plastic one. Uh, and that's caused by some adhesion taking place within that graduated cylinder. Uh, so hopefully you can see it. I'm not sure how clear the video is going to be for you to see it. Otherwise you can take two skinny cylinders and kind of create the same situation on your own. Uh, so for this next activity, uh, we have a test tube with about 5 milliliters of water. Uh, just tap water. And then uh, another test tube with about 5 milliliters of ethanol. Uh, to each one, we're going to add salt, about half a gram of salt. Uh, we've already got the salt uh, weighed out. And we're just going to add it in and then stir and see what happens, see whether we're able to dissolve that salt or not. So we're going to start with our water. Drop our salt in and we're just going to mix it up. Uh, we have a stir rod here to help us try to mix it up. We let that one sit. We'll add our salt to our alcohol solution. So now we got an alcohol and we want to add our salt to that one. And we'll use the other end of our stir rod to stir that one up. And go back to our water. In our water, it looks like most of that salt is starting to dissolve. Uh, we've still got a little bit at the bottom. Uh, it's been just about a minute, but we've got almost all of that salt dissolved. Uh, as we continue to stir it, you can see we don't really have any of that salt sitting there on the bottom anymore. Uh, and again, this is looking at the polarity. Water is a polar molecule, meaning it's got some uh, partial charges. And then salt, it's made out of sodium and chloride ions, uh, which also uh, have charges to them. If we look at the alcohol, pretty much none of that salt says all. We'll keep on trying, uh, but so far it doesn't look favorable for it all dissolving. As you can see, as we continue to stir, we still have quite a bit of salt. Uh, in the alcohol. Alcohol is a non-polar molecule, so uh, it's not very, very ready for the dissolving of uh, ionic compounds like we have with salt. Uh, but as you can see, almost all of our salts dissolved in the water. If we look at our alcohol, almost all the salts still in uh, our test tube. Uh, so that's our first part for this. Uh, second part, we'll do the same process only with sugar. Now for our second part of this lab, we'll do the same process we did uh, in the first half, only instead of using uh, salt, we have some sugar we'll be using. Uh, so we have sugar, uh, and again we'll start by mixing it in the water. So we'll pull our water out, we'll add in the sugar, and we're starting to mix it up. Uh, again, this is with the water, we'll repeat that same process uh, with our revenue alcohol.
few seconds, we'll give that one a little break, uh, mix up our alcohol, and then go back to our water. Put the last over right over. As we return to our water, we can see almost all the sugar has already dissolved. Uh, we'll finish stirring up and get the rest of that dissolved. Uh, same as when you're making uh, Kool-Aid or lemonade at home with your sugar. Uh, we should know that sugar is able to dissolve in our water. So pretty much all of our sugar has dissolved into our uh, water. Whereas if we go back to our alcohol, almost all that sugar is still sitting there in the bottom. Uh, so looking at this alcohol, We'll try to stir it up and get it to all dissolve, uh, but not looking very favorable at this time. So once again, in our water, uh, we saw it able to almost completely dissolve our uh, alcohol. Uh, we still have almost all that sugar uh, still sitting in the bottom of our test tube. Uh, so hopefully you got your data for the station as we move on to our next one. Uh, for our next activity, activity three, uh, we have a piece of wax paper. Uh, we're gonna make just about a dime sized droplet of water on this wax paper. Hopefully you can see it in this video. I'm not sure how well it's gonna show up. Uh, I'll try to make it so you can see it. Uh, so we made about this dime sized piece uh, or droplet of water, and then we're gonna use our pipette and try to drag it around the water. And we can see the water is clumping together and it's staying together as I try to drag it across our wax paper. It kind of moves across the wax paper a little bit, but it's staying as one huge droplet as I move it. Uh, next, we do that same process on a glass microscope slide. So we have a glass microscope slide and we'll do that same process. We'll make a, about the same size drop of water. And this time when we try to smear across, the water smears, it's not staying clumped together like it was in our first case. The water just smears and moves with that pipette. It's not staying as one huge droplet. Uh, and this is another trait caused by uh, cohesion and the polarity of water. Uh, so the wax paper is a non-polar substance uh, while the water is polar. So the water wants to stick together with that charge and stay at, with the cohesion, stay in that large droplet. On the glass, uh, it does have a, char a slight charge to it, just like the water has a slight charge, and that's what allows it to smear. The wax paper is what we refer to as hydrophobic, uh, while the glass is not. Thank you. Uh, in our next activity, uh, we have two Dixie cups. The first one has water inside of it. The second one has uh, isopropyl alcohol. Uh, and into each one we're going to add in a droplet of mineral oil and see what happens to that mineral oil. So first we're going to do the water. Try to get a good angle so you can see it. And we drop, I drop two droplets in and you can see, still see both the drops of mineral oil sitting on top of the water. It's not dissolving, it's not mixing in, it's sitting right there on top of our water solution. Uh, then we do the same thing in our rubbing alcohol, we drop in uh, one or two drops and in this case you can see the droplet starts to go down and starts to uh, dissolve into that alcohol. Uh, so that was mineral oil uh, first in water and now it's into uh, alcohol. A uh, mineral oil is a type of oil, it's a non-polar molecule. Uh, water, our first cup, is a polar molecule while it, uh, alcohol is another non-polar molecule as well. So that was uh, part five for you. Uh, so for our next station, uh, we have a balloon. Uh, and we'll use this balloon to uh, create some charge. So you just rub it on your clothing, uh, whether it's your pants, your sleeves, uh, your chest. Uh, you want to rub it just like you do like with the clothes. Uh, and while I'm doing that, I'm going to start running our water, just a slow, steady stream. Uh, and as we build up this charge on our balloon, we want that steady stream going. Uh, and then we'll see what happens when we put that balloon next to that water stream. Uh, so we should have some charge build up. So we're going to put the camera here so you can see that water, hopefully a little more clearly. And then hold it next to it. See, as we move the 
balloon closer, it's drawing that water stream towards that balloon. So you can see it's going straight down, and then as we move closer, it draws that water stream. Uh, and that's because we got a charge on that balloon, and we also have polarity in the water, which has, means the water has a charge, and it pulls that water towards that balloon uh, as we move it closer. Uh, so that was uh, part six, I believe, uh, but you can see that water move uh, due to the polarity. Uh, for our next station, uh, we're gonna determine the uh, density of a um, amount of liquid water. Uh, so we're going to start by just weighing our empty graduated cylinder and we get a mass of 25.60. You could also zero it out here uh, but we're going to weigh it and then do some subtraction at the end. Uh, next we're going to add 10 milliliters of water or about 10 milliliters of water uh, to our graduated cylinder and we'll try to make it exactly 10 and then we'll catch you at the scale. Uh, then for our next activity uh, we have three different solutions. First one's going to be water, second one's going to be alcohol or rubbing alcohol, third one's going to be uh, soapy water, and we want to see how many drops we can of water first and then alcohol and then soapy water that we can get on a penny before it breaks the surface. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started and we'll start counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 13, 14, 15, 16. I'm squirting a little off the side, so that's why you may see a little on the side. Uh, but we're up to 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. You can see it starting to form a surface uh, along the top of that penny. 23, 24. 25. So after 25, you can see it start to break that surface and start to slide off the edge of the penny. Uh, so 25 drops for our water. Uh, next, we we'll do. Our uh, so this time we're using rubbing alcohol, and we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, 15, 15. about 15 drops, and then you can see it all breaks the surface on that. So rubbing alcohol gave us 15. So 25 with water, uh, 15 with the uh, rubbing alcohol, and then we'll do one more with soapy water. Uh, so now we have soapy water, and again we'll see how many drops it takes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. About 10. So after our 10th drop, it started to break the surface. Uh, so 10 drops on the soapy water, uh, it was 15 on the rubbing alcohol, and then 25 on just uh, ordinary tap water. Uh, so that was your penny uh, test. Uh, hopefully you know. uh, for our next station, uh, we have two sponges. The first one's been sitting in water. Second one, the pink one's been in rubbing alcohol. Uh, we're just going to put some of that liquid on our arm and then time how long it takes to evaporate. So I'm going to put one on my right left arm, the water, and then the uh, alcohol on my left arm. And we'll start a timer, and we'll just time how long it takes to evaporate. Uh, so we should see a difference in how long they take to evaporate. Uh, Feel-wise, the alcohol feels a little bit cooler uh, when you put it on compared to the uh, water. Uh, and the alcohol also seems to be evaporating quickly. It hasn't quite disappeared yet, uh, but you can feel it starting to uh, disappear on us. The water is, still has a lot of moisture, a lot of wetness to us, uh, but as we let it sit, uh, alcohol is pretty much evaporated, and I'm going to call it at about 32 seconds on the rubbing alcohol. So our rubbing alcohol, that pink sponge, the rubbing alcohol, uh, all evaporated in 32 seconds. Uh, water, I still have that moisture, I still have that water on me. Uh, sometimes you can use a fan to help you out and speed up this process. Uh, but 32 seconds on our rubbing alcohol, and then our water is still going. Uh, Again, this is caused by some of the properties we're looking at in our water. Uh, this We're looking at the heat capacity and how much heat or energy it takes to uh, change the state of matter, going from a liquid uh, to a gas in this case. Uh, so the water's just about gone, just like in the alcohol, I'm just about to that stage. And we'll call it at about a minute 16, a minute 16 for our water. Uh, so 32 seconds for our alcohol and a minute 16 for our water. 
Uh, so now we got exactly 10 milliliters of water in our graduated cylinder. Uh, we're just going to take that graduated cylinder and put that on the scale and see what our mass is. Uh, 34.89. So now we have a final mass of 35.89. Uh, you have your initial mass of the graduated cylinder. So be able to subtract that to determine what your mass of your water is. Uh, to get the volume of water, we just added 10 milliliters. So that's going to be your volume, 10 milliliters. Uh, then for our last station, uh, we're determining the density of an ice cube. So we have an ice cube here. Uh, first, we're just going to weigh it. So I'm going to zero out my scale. And then we'll place our ice cube on the scale. And we get a mass of 5.89 for this ice cube. So 5.89 is our mass. Uh, then to get the volume, uh, we're just going to do length times width times height. Since we have a pretty much a cube, it's not a perfect cube in this case. Uh, but we'll assume it is to get our best value. Uh, so first for our length, uh, we have a value of about 1.9. Uh, then our width, we're going to do the same process. And we're going to get a volume. Value. We place it down. Uh, we get a value of about 1.6, 1.6 or 1.65. Finally, to get our height, we measure it from behind, and we get a height of about 1.9 as well. So 1.9 by 1.6 by 1.9. So not quite a perfect cube, uh, but close. Uh, use those values, multiply those three values together, and then we can determine the volume of our ice cube. And then reminder, to get density, you just take your mass, divided by your value. Uh, so just finished up our water property test. Uh, we have 10 different stations we worked through. Hopefully you were able to collect the data we needed. Uh, if you missed anything, make sure you go back and collect what you need. Uh, we got our station cleaned up and you can start answering your questions. Thank you.